Hello everyone, good morning, welcome back to the Hearthstone Ladder. My name is Rooster and we are playing Reno Lock today. A fairly, fairly traditional list, I feel. Uh, although Nazoth Reno Locks have been, um, have been on the rise as of late, um, people are, are recognizing the power of, uh, of Nazoth as an ability to, uh, to power out the other control decks, and, uh, and it even works in a Reno Lock shell relatively well. But uh, but this variant includes um, includes the obvious burst combo of um, of Leroy plus faceless manipulator plus power overwhelming. Not necessarily in that order, but um, it can really prove prove to be useful against um, against the more control -y deck types. Um, I don't think we're keeping Hellfire against a mage. I don't think no. Um, Dark Peddler, as usually, is fine in the early game, and Imp King Boss is the kind of 3-drop I would keep in my opener, almost always. Almost always, yeah. Um, let's see what kind of mage we're up against. If there's a Mana Worm coming out, then that's actually kind of obvious, but... Alright. Having the Shadow Bolt is kind of important when we're dealing with... For example, a flame waker later. Um, let's go for Void Walker here. I think we'll be able to squeeze that in somewhere and might be able to get a decent attack. Um, attack blocked, of course. So double mana worm as an opener kind of makes me wish I uh, I had kept my mm, my Hellfire in the opener now. But um, does that kill our minion? It does. Unfortunately, we may have to shed about one of these. Which kind of sucks. Um, she did use the. Oh, she did not use the coin. Oh, that's dangerous. That is really dangerous. I think we can. Uh, we can grab the board again with the Twilight Drake next turn. So I don't feel obliged to play the Endgame boss now. And we do need to do a little bit of damage control right now. So I. Um, I feel kind of bad about using uh, using a Shadow Bolt on something that is not a Flame Waker. But. Um, I think the, um, the Twilight Drake might also serve decently in that occasion, or we could go with the Refreshment Fender here, I don't, I'm not sure. I think we'll go Twilight Drake, just because it's a little less impressive in the, in the later game, and the main advantage of the, of the Refreshment Fender is, um, is that it heals, and that is also going to be more relevant in the late game. Um, Twilight Drake a little less impressive than I would have thought, but if she's trading here, she's not. Uh, at least she's not developing her board any further, which is uh, which is kind of good for us. Um, let's go and develop the board a little further with um, with either the refreshment vendor and the Void Walker, which is not too impressive right now. Or the Imkang Boss and the Acidic Swamp Ooze, which I think I like a little better and is better against the Flame Waker combo too. Um, Imkang Boss is a rather powerful tool against um, against a possible Flame Waker, which makes it really uh, really awkward. She would really want to, uh, to get rid of that first. She still has the coin, doesn't she? That is actually slightly troublesome. Torches that one, okay, okay. I don't feel too upset about that. And otherwise, another arcane missile. So, oh boy. Well, we could be in a little bit of trouble here. That is a decent result, though. Coins into a hero power. That means we still have a 1 1 left on the field, but that mana worm is starting to hurt. Yeah, Tempo Mage can be a problem if you uh, if you get a slowish start. I think we are going to have to tap here, trying to get something useful. Um, and basically any spell spells are doom right now. But if we can survive, maybe top deck, um, maybe top deck Reno. I don't know. Uh, yeah, a Frostbolt would kill us right here. Not sure whether she has something of the like. Or she just top decks another burn spell. Yeah, that's that's a really strong start, and that's rough to crawl back from. Uh, we did have we did have some decent answers, but the Void Walker did not 
Maybe I should have gone for the Voidwalker, actually. Um, could that have made a difference? I don't know. We went for, for the Ooze plus the... Um, maybe that would have been a better play last turn. Huh. It, it was the more conservative one, and we took the more aggressive one in the hopes of, uh, of beating a Flame Waker draw. Uh, but we could have gone for a Refreshment Fender plus Void Walker there, which uh, would have turned out a little better, I don't know. She did have the Arcane Missiles, I think it would have been basically the same. That, that, was, a, that was a Temple Mage draw that we weren't going to win in most occasions, I think. So At the point where uh, where a man worm becomes a, a, a six three, uh, it's it's basically like the like the tunnel drugs, right? Um, sometimes sometimes you just can't really beat their early curves. Um, refreshment fender when going first is not good enough. We need some early interaction, and anything will will do better than uh, than that. I feel. Um, rather slowish start, so Azul might be able to curve us out here. I greet you. Should I really have kept the Hellfire against the Mage? I don't think so. I don't think that's correct, but I could definitely be wrong. I've been wrong about stuff like that before. Um, unfortunately, having to tap here. Um, not too much I could have played there. I guess a Doomsayer would have been nice. Or, or even an ooze or something of the like. Um, but we at least have the Imkang boss for the next turn and a Demon Wrath that can clear up at some point in the future. So, um, so Imkang boss is decent. Let's, uh, let's see how he chooses to deal with this. Um, and then the Twilight Drake next turn for a 4-7. That's not bad at all. Getting the juggles in the right places feels good. Um, and this Demon Wrath is going to be pretty good next turn. Let's see what else he has here. Uh, does have another minion to clear that up, but the Demon Wrath is going to be really good over here. Um, and is basically going to be our play for next turn. So we even still have an imp left. Oh, that does not work. Well, at least we... Yeah, we should still do this. Um, didn't have to waste the imp there, but it was going to happen anyway. If uh, if I had realized that Void Walkers are actually demons, and that is uh, something I could have deducted by uh, by simply using the few brain cells that are still alive in my skull. Um, then I probably wouldn't have traded there, although I doubt it really matters too much in the long run. He would have likely made that trade anyway, so I don't feel too horrible about that. We're, uh, we are going to need a board wipe sooner rather than later, though. Again. Or perhaps a good taunt will also serve as well. I don't know about that. The, um, this guy over here is looking mightily menacing by now. Um, can we afford to... well, we don't really have a choice in whether the Knife Juggler survives or not. Um, we can't Argus. Argus seems really poor over here. We could, uh, we could Emperor, but that would be really greedy. Um, I think we have to Siphon Soul at Councilman. So that's going to be what we're sticking with here. That, that is just way too dangerous to leave alive here. Um, it's unfortunate, but next turn we might be able to pick up something useful and um, maybe halt the fort from that point onwards. I don't know. That is a curious card that I haven't seen in a while in a, in a zoo list, but yeah, it can work sometimes. Um, you would have to trade both. In oh, you could get a jungle here. That would be really sucky if it did. At least uh, the Twilight Drake sucked up a lot of damage over here. We are going to need a board wipe or we are basically dead here. Um, don't have a lot of stuff to do with 7 mana anyway, so that is not the card we're looking for. Are we dead against the board? 4, 5, 
9, 10, not necessarily, but pretty likely. Uh, anything we can do about that? Not really. In that case, we just want the biggest... Well, I guess we could refreshment vendor. Um, but I would rather take my chances of surviving against the board at this point and then making a really big taunt next turn, which could bail us out. I'm not sure. If he top decks any damage here, then we are pretty much done for, unfortunately. Um, so that is three. At least he does not. And soul fire. Alright. Well, um,. Yeah, yeah, that's rough. But I think if we had uh, if we had another bird clear here, uh, either a shadow flame or a hellfire or even a twisting, no, a twisting nether wouldn't have built us out there. But uh, one of those two would have given us the ability to crawl back from that game, I think. So, um, yeah, I don't feel too horrible. If um, if the the aggressive decks get a decent start on you, then um, then you're likely to be in trouble. That is just the sad truth of the matter. Um, so anything else I could have improved in that game? I don't think so. Um, it was a combination of bad luck on the mulligan. Him curving out nicely. Uh, having the burst finish, me not having Reno, and not drawing a second board clear. So yeah, um, sometimes you... you, you can overthink a little bit on um, do we want to keep the mountain giant against the hunter? I don't know. Seems like a decent card, although it's likely to run into uh, into deadly shot problems. But I think it's not unreasonable. Hunter is another. Hunter is quite possibly the worst matchup, and and that might not be um, might not be a, a glowing endorsement of the deck right now. Seeing as we just did lose two matches in a row against things that are not Hunter, but I assure you that um, that those matches are actually pretty winnable, and Hunter is going to be really rough. Except if you if you manage to get Reno and then get a decent start going, so we we could we could be okay here. Um, if we Imkang boss next turn, then we can we mine some giant to turn after. I think we can. So let's tap here. Um, so Imkang boss on the next turn, that means we're not using any cards, it means Mountain Giant is still 5. Wait... Does that make sense? No, Mountain Giant will be 4, of course. Alright, um, a little unfortunate that we're not able to play Kodo yet, but we might be able to make it work next turn. We can't kill the... we can't kill that thing right now. We could silence it next turn, which could be okay. Um, yeah, I think Imking Boss is going to be our best play regardless, and then we'll see where things go from there. It is also decent protection uh, for the Mountain Giant against a possible deadly shot, and he does not have the um, Houndmaster to punish here, which is pretty good for us. Um, and then the Mountain Giant this turn, or is that a little bit brave? I think we could also just go for the coin into Kodo. Which is rather strong, I think. And then next turn, what do we do next turn? We do have to Cult Apothecary, which is not unreasonable. Or we could just Mountain Giant still. That is okay. I would like to not immediately lose the game to a deadly shot here. So let's go for the for the more, more conservative approach. Let's call it that. Any time our opponent is not using his burn spells on our face is also a good time for us. Um, so we can take care of one of the spiders right here. Um, and not lose a cow, but that means we cannot use... Um, does that make a difference? I was going to say... Well, we could, uh, we could actually cult Apothecary here, and that's not going to be too awful. I would like to be able to Mortal Coil here, but that was a slight miscalculation, I guess. Well, we would have killed the Infested Wolf regardless, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, do we immediately lose to a deadly shot here? No, and it's going to be quite good if he does not have it. Okay, alright. 
I'm fine with this. He still has to trade his spiders into the Kodo and then um, and then play a deadly shot. That means he only has three mana left for the rest of his turn. So it's still pretty much okay here. We can uh, we can silence the high main, uh, which is rather good. Or we could attempt to steal it, which is also okay. We do have a demon wrath in case um, in case the things do get popped. And playing at Sylvanas after a high main is always rather good, so let's go with that. Um, I will allow him to hit us in the face with a high main over here. We do have to Reno to catch back up, and we have the means to clear up the um, the, two, the resulting 2-2s two easily. Um, and the Sylvanas is going to be a big pain in the ass for our opponent here. Oh, he's um he's going for the one in three here. That is um brave. Let's call it brave. Well, not a bad play altogether. Um, would I be fine trading my board here? I would not be. No, no, that would be rather rather disappointing. I think I could silence it, then kill that thing, and then do we just heal first and then just hit the doomsayer i don't hate it we can we can even tap in that case i like where that's going i like where that line leads us sure so we heal back up we hit the doomsayer and we're in a pretty good spot um that was that was a decent play i think although if uh, if we did steal the doomsayer well then i guess he didn't have to use the Kodo in that case. Yeah, yeah, that was a pretty good play for him. All right. So he can hit us pretty hard here. But we do have the Twisting Nether to catch back up or the Hellfire to clear most of his board over here. Most of his board. I'm not sure that's good enough right now. Um, well... We'll, we'll trade in the Cult of Buttercary and then draw a card and then... Hmm. The three mana slot is a little awkward here. How about we silence, we trade and then we... I don't know about that. We could just heal up a little bit. I kind of like the Hellfire here. We could silence this and then... I think we can leave him with a Leoc, how about that? I don't hate leaving him with a Leoc here. Still go going to pose us with the same problem, but sure. He's probably going to have to trade into this regardless. Um, and just play the mind control tech for tempo, I think. Let's go about it this way. He he kind of uh, he kind of has to trade the Leoc in, I think. Um, and if he has another Call of the Wild, that's still not terrible for us right now. And that play does indicate that he does not have one of those, which is pretty good for us. We have uh, we have one piece of the combo. Uh, we could Demon Wrath this down, which I don't feel terrible about. Probably the most useful play here, so I think I'll be going for that one. And that leaves us with two mana, so we can tap and refreshment fender. I think that's okay. There's no real reason to be careful with the. Well, are we are we dropping too low? No, I, d I don't feel I don't feel that's too much of a problem. Let's tap and see what we get. So we're healing our opponent for a little bit here, but we're doing so much better on uh, on guards than he is that we should not be too worried here. Okay, that's the second Call of the Wild coming out. He's trading that one off. So we could Twisting Nether here and not feel too terrible about ourselves, I think. Um, especially since we can also drop the Dark Peddler afterwards. And we should be able to clear up, clean up the game from then on. So just Twisting Nether for two cards, but um, that is most of his ability to... to, um, to create any sort of board from, um, from a standstill. So we should be able to control the game from, the, uh, from here on, I feel. Uh, we can silence that and then power overwhelming, or we can... Well, I guess we cannot over power overwhelming here, but we can just make a really big taunt, how about that? 
Alternatively, um, how about well, we can we can deal fourteen damage from hand here. Um, so when we draw our emperor, he's pretty much dead. How, how do we inflict face damage when he's the one with um, with all the stuff, though? I think we just taunt up. That is not unreasonable. Does not cost us any. Does not cost us any resources at this point, and um, he's likely to take three face damage from um, from whatever results here. Yeah, he's likely to use his weapon to clear uh, to clear at least some part of our minions over here. So let's see if this allows us. Oh, what's that trap gonna be? That is actually a curious question. Let me think about this. Well, he did not take any damage here, but that ooze is really good. Let's see. Um, let's check for the trap first, right? Um, if this is a freezing trap, we would want this one back in our hand. Um, is that actually true? We would have wanted to trade that one in, wouldn't we? Well, I'm still feeling reasonably okay with this. Because we can still ooze up. And then, I guess we Reno over here? It is our best tempo play, right? Oh, we could have tapped first. Um, do we still want to tap? We do, we still do. Um, and it should be pretty hard for him to win from this... from this point, yeah. Or we can, kill, can just kill him next turn. He has to start going face here, we've got 7 damage on hand, so just a Leroy and a Power Overwhelming will kill him here. Alright, well, um, so as long as you have your board players, as long as you have your Reno, then, uh, then even a bad matchup such as Hunter can definitely be won. So, there's, there's a little... Um, a little shining light in the distance, I guess. Let's uh, let's see what else is on the ladder. We've uh, we've faced a quite diverse cast of characters so far. I would like to uh, to actually face a control matchup, which is where this deck is sh supposed to shine. Mostly warriors should be really good. I don't know about rogue to be uh, to be completely fair. I I really don't know what to. I guess it could be good, but their burst combo could also be really good against us. Um, Mortal Coil I don't think I want to keep. Um, basically want to mulligan for things that can kill Auctioneer, right? Could have chosen to keep uh, Emperor of Thorazen, which wouldn't be the worst idea. Um, Ooze hasn't been as good against Rogue uh, as it used to be in the past. Mostly Mostly because rogues have uh, have kind of stopped running deadly poison all that often, and any additional weapons are also not all that common. So that's actually kind of curious. Um, not going to destroy their weapon here, so might as well just go for a dark peddler to get some kind of board presence. Although, come to think of it, do I like the voodoo doctor here? I don't hate it. Um, but the Mortal Coil could be valuable... I think the Mortal Coil will be more valuable in the long run. Um, actually, um, as I was going to say, I think the Dark Peddler might have been a mistake, since it just gives her an easy out to, uh, to backstab it or to SI7 it, but in the end that turned out to be quite okay. Um, so quitting the Twilight Drake, um, keeping pressure on the rogue is good, I, th uh, I think. Keeping the rogue under pressure, uh, if they have to stop a Twilight Drake this early, then that's really good for us. So, um, just just keeping the pressure on. Don't, don't take your foot off the pedal. And that is a rather slow, slow card. I uh, might indicate that we're dealing with some kind of death rattle type rogue, I'm not sure. 
Uh, but I don't feel too bad about trading the 2-2 in because it's likely to die to some kind of... D. Some kind of anything, basically. Um, and I think we're going for Earthen Ring Farseer here, again to, to just keep a little bit of pressure. Because tapping, uh, tapping would be the correct approach against a, a slower opponent, an opponent that is less, that is more likely to kill you quickly. Um, do we want to get rid of that? We don't want to silence that, I think, so... Uh, might be, might be a Reno type rogue, actually. Interesting. And her removing that does um, does mean that we are not able to deal with the Twilight Summoner properly. So I think that means we're going for... Hmm, are we going for the tap? Tap seems rather weak, but... I suppose we could stun Fury afterwards and that would... That would not be the worst idea. I certainly don't want to coil that. Um, and the uh, refreshment vendor also seems kind of weak. Let's uh, let's see how we. Sure, this is this is acceptable. We can go for the giant next turn, and I, um, as I said before, um, keeping 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 them under some amount of. Oh, that's good. All right. You want to buy a final game? So perhaps I should have gone. Well, I I could not have gotten rid of the five five, which is kind of a problem. Um. So that is, that is actually kind of ugly. What would be the best way to deal with that right now? Well, I guess we could uh, we could coil one of them and then play the giants. That's, that's not awful. Mm. Now, the five fives are rather slow, so we should be able to deal with them when we have a giant on the board, I feel. So let's go with this approach. This. We could just go face here. I mean, the rogue kind of has to deal with our board in this case. Killing, killing the Twilight Summoner is just so awkward. I think I'm just killing the Huckster here. I kind of like that. Let's just keep the rogue under pressure. We do have a Leroy in hand. We don't have any other cards to come up with it, but it should be good enough. If you get one discount on any of the um, of the power overwhelming lure or faceless cards, that's um, that's enough to make uh, to make a decent uh, to make a decent kill combination. So this now means oh they get a power overwhelming. Okay, that's cute. You you don't expect to find that, but um, that gives the rogue to five five. So with any kind of board clear, we would be pretty well off. Um, and as long as we can just stay alive at this point, we should be in okay shape. Which may be more of a challenge than, um... Which may be more of a challenge than we originally anticipated, of course. Um, I... Part of me kind of wants to be greedy... I don't know about this. We're certainly dropping the Mountain Giant, right? But what else do we do? We could drop the Mountain Giant for 3 and then get some kind of 2-drop in there, I don't know about that. Um, Refreshment Fender feels kind of bad, but a combination would still deal 20 damage, so I guess that's still... Oh, uh, that's a mistake. Oh my gosh. Overthinking, right? Overthinking. Um, that's really bad. That is really, really, really bad. Oh my gosh. Do we... Well, Doomsayer is not going to do a whole lot unless combined with some... Ah. Oh, that was so silly. Why on earth did I not think about that? Okay, that, that, may, that may just have lost me the game there. Um, the Rogue did make a, quite a good play against... Um, well, last turn with the... Did I really need to drop the, the refreshment fender even? Well, well, it's it's something on the board and it keeps the rogue busy for a little bit, which is kind of good enough. Um, twenty damage is not going to be enough to protect yourself, but I am going to need a board clear here. 
Um, although this seems kind of nice. Um, I don't have to heal, though. <coughs> well, in that case, we want to drop the Mountain Giant, of course, and then Mind Control Tech, I guess. Destroying the weapon is also not awful. So, alright, we'll, we'll make up for our mistakes here. I was thinking about shadow um, shadow bolting one of uh, one of our minions, but that might be a little bit greedy. I'm uh, I'm expecting to be up against a Reno deck here, which is which does not bode very well for us actually. Although um, a surprise combo will be able to um, to take her down from this life total at the very least, and any kind of board player we get should be able to deal with this board. So there's uh, there's the silver lining here. Um, any trades? Go wow, that is that is aggressive, man. Are you sure about that? There's some some awful traffic noise in the background, for which I'm terribly sorry. So um, yeah, we should definitely start trading here. I really want to drop the Cult Apothecary too. Um, Cult Apothecary and Shadow Bolt will be fine, right? So we just leave the Rogue with a five-five on the field, which is fine. That is that is okay. Um, this and Shadow Bolt kind of would have liked to drop the Kodo, but I guess we'll do without. Um, so that allows us to trade um, something like this. Uh, leaves her with a 5-5, five five, but that's okay. I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't see any way in which she, she could kill me. I could always trade a bunch of minions off there. So I don't really know where she was going with that. A mortal coil would be pretty good here. Is she, is she st shadow stepping that? I don't think that's. What what else could? Okay, there's the Reno. So that's a little awkward. I'll admit. I don't think that deck has a burst combo though. Oh, she's just dropping cards because of the um, because of the um, Edwin. That kind of does make sense. Okay, um, so what do we need here? I think we're tapping. Are we tapping? Well, we're drawing this card always, right? So in that case, um, do we tap and hope to get a minion and then Argus up, see how we do after that? That's not unreasonable, I think. And that is a very good target to Argus up in the first place, so I'm not terribly upset about that. Um, not sure where this game is going. Not dropping that Mountain Giant on time really did screw us over, because we... Well, mostly because we didn't have any decent alternatives for it. Um, that's a card. Well, we're, we're certainly not winning the late game in that case, but we could do a decent... Okay, okay, that's 12 damage burst for now. Okay, um, we kind of have to kill that Anubarak, right? We, we can't take that to the face too many times. Um, so if we Demon Wrath here, what do we do? What do we do if we Demon Wrath here? We may just have to Jerexus and... Jeez, these things are making a lot of noise. Uh, we could we could actually um, face with manipulator the Anubarak. Uh, That's actually kind of ridiculous, and I kind of love it. So many okay, so we're trading this. We're trading this. Um, wait. Order, order is so important. We can faceless it when we. No, no, it's okay. No, we really, we really need to faceless this turn, right? So I guess this is kind of awkward in that case, but sure. Um, yeah, ordering, ordering's kind of bad. Um, and we did just give up our burst combo, but... Man, that thing was distracting. <laughs> I'm totally going to blame the traffic here, um, and not my own stupidity. Now, I, I was thinking um, an 8-2 Anubarak might just be better than an 
than the other one, right? Um, so the Spellbreaker is pretty decent. Uh, we could Spellbreak and then Leroy and hope to win the Anubarak War. How was that? We leave her with two one ones on the field, but that's not unreasonable. I um, mean, it does mean that we get rid of it right now um, and not run the risk of dying, right? Well, are are we are we dying right away? I don't think we are, but we're we're giving her a lot of a lot of time. Most of all, I think that's okay. We can uh, we can win it this way. I think we can win it this way. Let's um let's see. We're running out of cards, but the combination of uh, of Lord Jirexus and Anubarak, I think, can win us the game. We still have a couple of board wipes left, so that's good. Um, she will have a way to deal with the spell breaker, unfortunately. Um, but there's there's still a Hellfire, there's still a Shadow Flame in this deck. I think we're okay. I'm not sure about this board though. Do we... I don't think we can Jiraxis here, that's just too dangerous, right? We can kill this and make a 6-6 six, six, and then take 6 the next turn, I guess that's okay. And then we can... then we can... So many Infernal so many. Shadow Flame the turn after. That may be the way to win here. It's hard to catch back up on the board though. Um, but I think, well, we're, take, we're taking nine, basically. Oh, that is so rough. So many possible. These cards are so expensive. This is, so, this is good in two out of four situations. Maybe the way to, uh, to go from here. I don't think the Jaraxxus is, uh, is really... We, we still do have Reno, so I guess that's... We kind of want to, to Reno before Jirexus, though. Hmm. I don't know about this. Okay, so the Shadow Flame is reasonable here. Um, don't like it, but... Does she... Yeah, the Shadow Flame's okay, depending on what we draw, of course. I would, I would really like to find a Reno at this point. Ooh, how good is that? Um, that means her Sylvanas triggers first, um, and then mine does, I believe. So I would just steal my own Ragnaros back, right? I think we can survive on six. I wonder. Sure. No I'm not sure about this. I'm hoping... Yeah, they die at the same time, so she steals my Ragnaros and, I, and then I steal my Ragnaros back. Good. Okay, okay. Would it have mattered if we... Yeah, if we did play the, um... The Anubarak correctly, then that would have mattered. Okay, so we're dropping down to one here. Does she have another? Thank you. No, she does not. Okay, so she can attack face, but then we can Jiraxis. And I think... That's going to be pretty good. We can't kill any of the minions, but she can't kill us, and we can easily take her down next turn. Or we could just take a 1 in 3 on winning the game here, which is certainly better than killing any of the minions over here. So, unless she has something miraculous, we can still win this one. Although we certainly did make our share of mistakes, I will be the first to admit that. Draws a card. And that is game. Alright. So, so yeah, I'm certainly glad I, uh, I hung on to that Spellbreaker for as long as we did. Um, do we want to give it one more game? Let's give it one more game, shall we? Um, and that was certainly a control matchup, so it, well, in a way I, I got exactly what I asked for. Maybe some kind of warrior, um, but preferably not a pirate warrior, if, I, um, if I'm allowed to make any 
requests. Okay, perhaps this will be an illustration of how to lose against Hunter then, <laughs> because we um, we are certainly not the favorite in this matchup. Um, getting the Demon Wrath is, is reasonable enough. Hunter, Hunter is likely to have some minions with two or less HP on the field, I feel, so that, that could be okay. We, we really do require our Reno sooner rather than later, though, and this is um, not a very promising start so far. Maybe the Elven Ring is just not good enough, I don't know. Um, let's see about this. I think we coin out the Earthen Ring and see where we go from there. Just have to do a little bit of damage control, because I think tapping here will lead to an early loss. Although that Mountain Giant is looking mightily powerless in our hand right now. If he does not trade, that would be pretty good for us. Or actually, well, it's, it's basically the same. It is basically the same. Um, we could kill... well, we could... Mortal Coil instead. That's not unreasonable, right? So let's Mortal Coil this. If it hits this, we're certainly trading. And if not, well, can we afford to take another free... Yeah, I think we can. We're likely to be able... Ooh, but if he has Houndmaster, that's going to be really bad. I don't think we can afford that. So let's draw a card. I know, I know, draw a card last, but um, it's not like we were doing anything else that turn. Um, nothing good to do this turn, but if I tap I'm not going to make things better. Um, could just drop the mind control tech, which is not awful. Unless he has a Houndmaster, I guess. That is, uh, that is a risk I'm willing to take. Um, so for next turn we could have a Mountain Giant, which is, uh, which is pretty okay. He's, uh, he's certainly putting on some pressure here, but um, could also... Oh, of course he's straight. Naturally. That is also a pretty good top deck, I will admit. Um, but I think I'll... That will have to wait until next turn. Let's um, let's lose the game to deadly shots. Let's do exactly that. I don't think ooze is going to be uh, a valid option right here. Okay, and now we can ooze this turn and Argus up, which is going to be pretty good for us. Um, in that case. Do we even trade into this thing? I think I want him to uh, to use both of both of his so minions. I don't want to give him the. I don't want to give him access to the little spiders. I think. So this will be the best option, and in that case, I yeah, I really don't want to give him access to the spiders. So I think I'm just going face at this point. That may look a little strange, but uh, but killing killing either of those just gives him more options, I feel. And if he chooses to trade both of those in... What's happening here? Okay. So that is, that is fine. Um, we have a board wipe for next turn, and it's very, very likely that the Hyman dies. And he's wasting a lot of tokens here. That is, um, that is certainly a shame. <laughs> that is certainly a shame, sir. Um, so... I kind of want to wipe the board here, but I kind of also want to use my Cult Apothecary. Uh, but I think wiping the board will be more beneficial. We don't have anything to do along with it, though. So perhaps just... Healing for a lot will be enough. Um, healing for 10 and then taking taking almost 10 immediately afterwards. That doesn't sound too appealing though. Um, can we afford to tap? I think we might need to tap right here. 
could also Shadow Flame and tap. Um, I'm a little scared of dying, I will admit. But I think tap always happens this turn, and that means we could Shadow Flame, but that's really weak. I think we Demon Wrath here. Or Cult Apothecary and just... Ooh, I'm, I'm really scared. Let's go with this. Let's be a little greedy. Healing for 10 seems pretty good, but uh, we are immediately taking another 7. If he if he called the wilds, that's really terrible, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I should have gone for the demon wrath here. Trade uh, trade the Argus into oh, okay. Well, no call the wild is good for us. And if he trades, then that is okay with me. Um, I think that means we are playing Sylvanas here. I'm not sure about that. Wait, did he? What did he trade into? Oh? Did he didn't he honestly Oh no no of course the, the toad the toad killed that, of course. So that means uh we can Dark Peddler and how much are we taking next turn? We're taking five, six, seven, twelve. Twelve and four, so we're not exactly dead to to call the wild, but basically basically we are. Don't feel too good about that, but I think Dark Paddler into Sylvanas is going to give us the most options over here. Voidwalker will be valuable, I think. Uh, we could Shadow Flame that does basically nothing with it. No, I think we basically have to Sylvanas here. And I think, um, I think last turn was a mistake. Does he have double kill command? Yeah, that's, that's the risk. Um, you don't have a lot of healing, so you really have to... Um, couldn't he have just killed us last turn if he had both of those? Or did he just stop deck it? I don't know. Oh well, um, that's why Hunter's tricky. You, you, you're inclined to, um, to take a lot of risks. Could I have played the Voidwalker here and not died? Perhaps I could have, but I didn't have a lot of good options. That's, that's kind of a problem. Um, but I think with the full board I should have gone for the Demon Wrath instead of the um, Cult Apothecary. He was likely to flood the board afterwards anyway, so would have still gotten worth out of that and then better Demon Wrath was really hard to get. Um, anyway, um, I do hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, Reno Lock might be a rough deck to play, uh, especially with all the Hunters on the, on the ladder, uh, but it, the Warrior matchup is supposed to be pretty good, except for perhaps Pirate Warrior. Um, so if you're facing a lot of Warriors, definitely a deck to try, and otherwise it's always just a fun deck to be playing regardless. So I hope you'll uh, have a lot of fun with it on the ladder. Uh, a really customizable deck too, so if you have one or two pet cards that you would like to try, uh, like a Bane of Doom, I was really tempted to put a Golden Bane of Doom in this one. Um, ended up not doing that, but... It definitely fits with the deck, so feel free to experiment. Um, and as always, have a great day, everyone. Um, if there's a deck you would like to see me play, please leave a comment below, and I will see you tomorrow.